Dogs come in all shapes and sizes. There are hundreds of different breeds, and each breed is a different combination of traits. The way a dog looks is controlled by genes. A Chihuahua and a Great Dane look very different because their genes are different. A Chihuahua has genes for small body size and pointy ears. A Great Dane has genes for large body size and floppy ears. Today we are going to talk about the genes that affect fur coats in dogs. The fur of different dogs can be different in color. It can also be different in length and texture. A few dogs have so much fur they almost look like mops, while other dogs are practically hairless. The neat thing about dog fur is that a lot of the variation in fur is due to just three genes. There's one gene that determines whether a dog is going to have short fur like a boxer or long fur like a golden retriever. There's another gene that determines if a dog is going to have a curly coat like a poodle or a straight coat like a German Shepherd. Finally, there is a third gene that determines whether a dog will have a wiry coat like a Yorkie or a straight coat like a Beagle. These wiry coats are a lot like hair and don't fall off or shed like the coats of many other dogs. The combination of these three genes is different for different dog breeds. A Doberman Pinscher always has a short coat that isn't wiry or curly. A Shih Tzu always has a long coat, wiry and not curly. Now, let's take a look at two different dogs. Zombie is a purebred Labrador Retriever. Like all labs, he has a short coat that isn't wiry or curly and probably sheds a lot. Snowfire is the opposite of Zombie. She is a toy poodle that has a long coat that is curly and has wiry human-like hair. Like all poodles, this coat doesn't shed much and many people find they are not as allergic to poodles as they are to other dogs. Zombie and Snowfire had a puppy named Sprightly. Every puppy gets one copy of every gene from its mother and one copy of every gene from its father. This means Sprightly has one copy of the short fur gene and one copy of the long fur gene. She also has one copy of the straight fur gene and one copy of the curly fur gene. And she has one copy of the normal coat gene and one copy of the wiry coat gene. To know what kind of coat Sprightly will have, we need to know which gene is dominant for each of these. For a dominant trait, you only need to have one copy of the gene to have the trait. For a recessive trait, you need to have two copies, one from your mother and one from your father to have the trait. In dogs, wiry hair-like coats are dominant. Curly coats are also dominant. Long fur, however, is recessive. So this means dogs like Sprightly will have short coats like a lab, but they won't be straight. They'll be wavy and low shedding like a poodle. Sprightly is a Labradoodle that doesn't look like a Labrador or a poodle. Instead, her coat is determined by the mix of genes she inherited from Zombie and Snowfire. Sprightly is all grown up now, and she had a puppy with a dog named Wagner. Wagner is a purebred poodle with a mix of standard poodle genes and miniature poodle genes. He has two copies of all the fur genes that poodles have, which means his puppies will always inherit one copy of the long fur gene, one copy of the wiry fur gene, and one copy of the curly fur gene from him. However, Sprightly is a Labradoodle. Her puppies might get the poodle long fur gene from her, or they might get the Labrador short fur gene from her. They could also get the straight fur or curly fur gene, and they could get the wiry gene or not. It all depends on which copy of each chromosome gets passed on into each puppy. Let's take a look at Sprightly and Wagner's daughter, Ladybug. Ladybug got half her DNA from Sprightly and half her DNA from Wagner. That means she's about 25% Labrador and about 75% Poodle. When we look at her three fur genes, though, we see that she has two Poodle copies for all three. She's quite the lucky lady. In fact, even though Ladybug is 25% Labrador, her coat is almost identical to a Poodle coat because she happened to inherit all Poodle DNA for these three important genes. Sprightly and Wagner's coats aren't just different lengths and textures. They're also different colors, too. Wagner has a brown and white coat. There's no black in his coat at all. This is because of a gene called the E. locus. Black coats in dogs are dominant to brown coats, so a dog with one or two copies of the capital E gene will be able to have black fur. 
But dogs like Wagner, with two copies of the lowercase e gene, will not be able to have black fur. All the dark parts of their coat will be brown instead of black. Sprightly's coat does have some black fur because Sprightly has one copy of the capital E gene. Sprightly's coat also has a very striking mottled pattern called Merle. Merle is not a color pattern that's found in Labradors. Instead, she inherited the Merle gene from her mother, Snowfire. About 4% of all poodles have this pattern, and the Merle gene is dominant, meaning you only need one copy of the capital M Merle gene to have the Merle color pattern. When we look at Ladybug's DNA, we see she has one copy of the capital E gene and one copy of the capital M gene from Snowfire. So like Snowfire, Ladybug has some black fur and a mottled Merle pattern. Nevertheless, her coat doesn't look exactly like Snowfire's. She clearly inherited genes from Wagner that led to her coat having much more white fur than Snowfire. There's lots of different genes that influence dog coat colors, and new ones are being discovered all the time. They can combine with each other in sometimes unexpected ways. Nevertheless, by knowing about the key genes that have the biggest influence on coat texture and color, and knowing which gene variants are dominant and which ones are recessive, we can predict a lot about a dog's appearance, even in mixed breed dogs like Ladybug.